What are some creepy facts about Antarctica? Story 1. Underground lakes. Though it's hard to fathom anything beneath Antarctica's enormous layers of ice, scientists have found several subsurface lakes. In the areas that were investigated, there are thought to be 400 lakes hidden beneath three kilometers of ice, having been first discovered in 1970 using radar technology. The lakes are thought to have originated after Antarctica split off from the ancient supercontinent Gondwana land. The weight of the ice sheet exerts pressure on the lakes, preventing them from freezing. Lake Vostok is the largest subglacial lake in Antarctica, having been found by Russian scientists in the 1990s. Located 3.5 kilometers below the surface of the ice, it is also the world's third largest lake in terms of capacity. Since then, scientists have bored deep holes in the ice to collect samples of the lake's water. One sample revealed that, Despite the water having been buried in ice more than 20 million years ago, the temperature was only about 3 degrees Celsius. Nearly a kilometer beneath the ice sheet in Lake Willens, scientists made a significant discovery in 2014, a varied and dynamic ecosystem of microorganisms. Despite not having seen sunlight or fresh air for millions of years, these amazing creatures continue to thrive by using ammonium and methane as energy sources. Story 2. Deep Lake. Deep Lake is an inland lake in East Antarctica that has fascinated scientists for years. The lake sits 55 meters below sea level, with water salinity increasing as it gets deeper. Its salty waters are comparable to the Dead Sea and are 10 times saltier than the ocean. This means the water does not freeze, despite temperatures reaching 20 degrees Celsius at its deepest point. The lake is practically inhabitable, with one of the least productive, yet most remarkable ecosystems in the world. Scientists have found four microbe species living in the waters, although it's dangerous for most other animals. Some penguins have been spotted swimming in the waters, but they can easily die as the lake is much colder than the ocean. Story 3 Blood Falls A vivid red, five-story waterfall cascades from Taylor Glacier into Lake Bonney in the McMurdo Dry Valley. Although it appears to be a blood spurt from an ice fracture, scientists have just identified the source of this enigmatic occurrence. Once a saline lake, the water that feeds blood falls is now isolated from the atmosphere because of the glaciers that have formed on top of the lake. Saturated to three times the salinity of seawater, the stored water is 400 meters below the surface and will never freeze. The salt water has no oxygen or sunlight, and it is also incredibly iron-rich. The iron in the water oxidizes and rusts as it seeps through a glacier crack and comes into contact with the air, giving the water a dark red tint. The only ways to see this unsettling sight are by helicopter or aboard cruise cruises that explore the Ross Sea. Story 4. Unusual Creatures Despite being a desolate, frozen desert with little precipitation, strong winds, and the lowest recorded temperature of 89.4 degrees Celsius, Antarctica is also home to a wide variety of unusual fauna. Before, it was believed that nothing could live beneath the enormous ice sheets, yet researchers have found a variety of odd organisms that have adapted to the hostile climate. There are microscopic organisms, crustaceans, enormous squid, lanky spiders the size of dinner plates, and enormous worms with keen teeth and shimmering golden hairs. Even see-through ice fish are available. These bizarre beings have big eyes and translucent skin that reveals their interior organs. Because of its antifreeze glycoproteins, the fish cannot withstand temperatures above 37 degrees Celsius. Additionally, they lack hemoglobin, a substance that gives human blood its red color. Story 5. Ancient Fossils and Rainforests In the past, Antarctica was a warm place with rainforests. Over millions of years, Antarctica has experienced some amazing changes. It is an ancient land. Antarctica was really a tropical place with rainforests and probably even civilizations before the Ice Age turned it into a frozen desert. The discovery of fossilized wood, clues to tropical tree species, and leaf impressions indicating the presence of rainforests in Antarctica all contributed to the development of the idea. Numerous fossils of dinosaurs, birds, and marine species from the Cretaceous period have also been discovered by scientists. A beetle species that existed in a warmer environment between 14 and 20 million years ago had its fossilized forewings found among the smaller species, and scientists have been debating the existence of tiny single-celled fossils for a long time. Additionally, scientists have discovered sperm cells that date back 50 million years on the egg case of a long-extinct worm species. This is an incredible find that they think will provide fresh insights into evolution. Story 6. Gambertsev Mountain Range Beneath its enormous ice sheets, Antarctica is home to a large mountain range and many other secrets. The Gambertsev Mountains are concealed beneath a sheet of ice that is between two and 4,000 kilometers thick. They cover 1,200 miles and reach a height of 3,000 meters, which is one-third of Mount Everest's height. Once the mountains were found by Russian geologists in 1958, they were named after Soviet geophysicist Grigory A. Gambertsev. While traversing Antarctica, the scientists came upon a thin sheet of ice. They noticed unusual variations in gravity and captured the amazing spectacle beneath. 
scientists can examine the mountains down to their base using gravitational and magnetic measurements, and they can utilize radars to observe the mountain's physical characteristics, even if we have never been there. Scientists have long been perplexed by the Gombertsev, wondering how they developed and why they persist. Given that the mountains are almost a billion years old, geological time should have worn them away. There are several ideas as to why they survive, the main one being that the mountains may be shielded from erosion by a frozen mantle. Story 7. Singing Ice In Antarctica, a huge block of ice is singing. The greatest ice shelf in Antarctica is called the Ross Ice Shelf. It is spread throughout an area of nearly 500,000 square kilometers, or roughly the size of France, and is several hundred meters thick. Recent research has revealed that the winds sweeping across the snow dunes caused the Ross Ice Shelf to hum an unsettling symphony. The winds produce nearly constant seismic tones and surface tremors. Scientists utilize seismic sensors to hear the melancholic melody produced by the vibrations, which are imperceptible to human hearing. After seismic sensors were placed on the ice shelf to monitor other behaviors, the song was unintentionally found. Since then, scientists have shown that the music reacts to environmental changes, such as melting snow or storms moving the snow, among other things. Now, by tracking the ice shelf stability and potential for collapse through the seismic humming, they are able to monitor it in real time using the song as a tool. Story 8. The Giant Hole In 2017, an opening the size of Ireland appeared in Antarctica. The hole, which is called a polynia, is not particularly novel, but at 78,000 square kilometers, it is the largest hole to be seen since the 1970s and the first to open in 40 years. The polynia, which is located in the Southern Ocean's Weddell Sea, was created by the warmer, saltier water that was present in the sea's lower depths. Ocean currents force warm water upward, melting the ice that covers the surface. The water sinks once again as it comes into touch with the colder surface water, but it is then heated and forced back to the surface. Although the exact cause of the polynia's creation is unknown, scientists think that marine mammals may be using the apertures as breathing holes. The effects of these odd, enormous holes are still being studied. Story 9 Mount Erebus Numerous volcanoes may be found in Antarctica, despite the extremely cold climate. On Ross Island, there are four volcanoes. However, all of them are dormant, with the exception of Mount Erebus, whose activity has actually grown over the past 30 years. With molten magma and ancient lava lakes that have been boiling for around 1.3 million years, Mount Erebus is a remarkable natural wonder. With a height of 3,800 meters, it is the second highest volcano in Antarctica and the southernmost active volcano in the world. Due to its remote position and hazardous weather, Scientists are unable to visit Mount Erebus very often. Nonetheless, in 2013, a team of scientists succeeded in climbing the volcano. After hiking through snow, ice, and boulders to the summit, they discovered creatures that survived in the volcano's heat. These extreme species are thought to be among the most peculiar in the planet. They also found several ice caves with flourishing bacteria in the soil. Story 10. Southern Ocean. Antarctica's Surrounding Southern Ocean. In 2000, the Southern Ocean was ranked as the sixth ocean in the world. Encircling the whole continent of Antarctica, it is the fourth largest ocean globally. It includes the southern regions of the Pacific, Indian, and Atlantic Oceans, and is a crucial factor in the movement of the world's oceans. At its deepest point, around 7,300 meters, it is almost twice as large as the United States. Perhaps the key to absorbing carbon emissions lies in this enigmatic ocean. Researchers have discovered that 15% of human-caused carbon emissions have been absorbed by the southern ocean. Though it won't survive forever, it is an amazing amount and scientists are working hard to figure out how this process works. Traveling to Antarctica by ship will take you over the Southern Ocean, where you may observe the ocean's overwhelming might and get your first view of the Antarctic Peninsula from the observation decks. Story 11. McMurdo. Dry Valleys. Although most people associate deserts with scorching sandy plains, Antarctica is home to the world's largest desert. With as little as 50 millimeters of yearly precipitation, it is extremely windy and dry, and 99% of the continent is covered in ice. The McMurdo Dry Valleys, with their enormous sand dunes that can grow up to 70 meters high and 200 meters wide, are located in the remaining 1% of the land. These dunes are not suitable for sandboarding, yet they are a vital location for researchers. Because of its climate resemblance to Mars, experts think the dry valleys may contain clues to extraterrestrial life. But the dunes are migrating at a startling rate, an average of 1.5 meters every year. Scientists surmise that this is a result of climate change since rising temperatures cause ice to melt and dunes to retreat. In order to solve the mysteries of the dunes before they go forever, they are currently working swiftly. Story 12. Antarctic Fungi All around Antarctica, a variety of microbes and extremophiles have been found, including an indigenous form of fungus. While most mushrooms grow best in warm, forested areas, 
This Antarctic fungus thrives in the frigid temperatures by feeding on the centuries-old wooden cabins left behind by the first explorers. Researchers have found another kind of fungus that feeds on the oil that leaks from fuel containers that explorers left behind. Researchers are looking into these amazing organisms to see whether the fungus may be used to clean up more significant oil spills globally. Story 13. Ancient Meteorites Meteorites can be found in abundance in Antarctica. Meteorites can fall anywhere on Earth, but they are more common in Antarctica because of the region's extreme cold and dryness, which helps to preserve the rocky bits. Since few rocks naturally grow on Antarctica's ice sheets, the dark meteorites are also easier to identify on the glaring white surface of the ice. Additionally, they are almost usually extraterrestrial rocks. Because the vast ice sheet in the East Antarctic has remained motionless for an extended period of time, sunshine and strong winds have drained its upper layers, making it an ideal location for meteorite discoveries. This displays the massive meteorite concentrations and the older ice. Since 1976, more than 20,000 samples of extraterrestrial meteorites have been gathered. The largest meteorite recovered in East Antarctica in 25 years was discovered in 2013 by a team of Belgian and Japanese scientists. The stone from space weighs an astounding 18 kilograms. After 40 days of searching, the team discovered 425 meteorites weighing a combined 75 kilograms. A Mars meteorite and a fragment of the asteroid Vesta were among the finds. Story 14. Aliens, Lies, and the lost city Antarctica has always been a haven for mysticism and has given rise to many conspiracy theories. Many individuals think that Antarctica once supported extraterrestrial life, or perhaps still does, based on evidence such as elongated skulls, weird pyramids, alien spaceships, bizarre structures, and a massive staircase. Numerous UFO sightings are claimed each year, and Google Earth has recorded some strange activity that is purportedly alien in nature. Look up for any strange green lights in the sky. It's a hotspot for alien hunters. Deep beneath Antarctica's surface, where no one has ventured before, lies the enigma of the continent. There are rumors that the lost city of Atlantis is concealed beneath miles of ice. When Antarctica was a warm, tropical place, the metropolis would have flourished and would have been buried when the Ice Age turned the continent into a frozen wasteland. Although the existence of a civilization in Antarctica is quite likely, it has not yet been established that the continent is the location of the storied lost city. Additionally, there are theories that the utilized Antarctica's subterranean as a covert hideout, and some individuals even think that Hitler retreated there after the war. He had a strong interest in occultism and was looking for something in Antarctica. The Germans established a station there, but it was abandoned 70 years ago after the crew members were poisoned by polar bear flesh. Despite the theory's failure, conjecture over what might lay beneath Antarctica's enigmatic surface continues. We may never fully understand the mysteries of the Great White Continent which is the planet's most puzzling and inexplicable region despite the passionate efforts of scientists everywhere. Story 15. Ocean Arachnids. This is the part you might want to avoid if you have arachnophobia. It's unbelievable, but sea spiders may be seen darting around on the dark ocean floor in Antarctica. Actually, they are marine arthropods. These squirmy creatures can reach a diameter of 50 centimeters in the Antarctic. They breathe through holes in their legs, as if they weren't already bizarre enough. Many people will probably never sleep again after reading it. Story 16. A pyramid-shaped mountain in the southern Ellsworth Mountains almost brought down the entire internet in 2016. Some conjectured that it might be the ruins of a long-gone civilization. Others thought that aliens had built it. The reality was far more straightforward. Experts came to the conclusion that Mother Nature was its architect. This stunning monolith was formed by erosion over hundreds of millions of years. Story 17. A portion of the Antarctic is transformed by this phenomena into life-sized, candy-colored ice. It appears appetizing enough to eat, but you wouldn't want to. The distinct appearance of the snow is caused by an algal bloom, which is caused by the cold-resistant microscopic algae Chlamydominus nivalis, releasing red and green spores as the ice warms throughout the Antarctic summer. This is said to also render the snow poisonous and unfit for human consumption. So pack away those cones of ice cream. Story 18. Sea pigs. You get something that looks like a sea pig, somewhere between a kraken and an axolotl. We only know that these scavengers are important to the health of the ocean ecosystem. Nobody knows how long they survive. They eat the nutrients that decaying organisms release. They return those nutrients to the food chain when they are eaten. They work, despite being strange. Story 19. Third Man Factor. Speaking of possibly not being alone, hallucinations have been reported to be brought on by the severe weather and fluctuating sunshine hours. In his 1922 poem, The Wasteland, T.S. Eliot made reference to the third man factor describing moments when travelers perceive or sense a presence as shadows are cast over the seemingly endless plains. 
Ernest Shackleton's Antarctic Expeditions, in which it was thought that every member of the company shared a common experience, served as the inspiration for this particular illusion. The purpose of the event is to provide consolation to those experiencing the most difficult and hopeless moments of their lives. As a result, it makes sense to believe that it has a significant influence on certain unfortunate people's last moments. Story 20, Dead Bodies Hard, would be an understatement to characterize the conditions in Antarctica, which is why many of the early explorers who traveled there in the 19th and 20th centuries perished. Thankfully, travel to the continent is now considerably safer thanks to technological advancements and other safety measures. Although the precise number of deaths over the years is unknown, it is clear that not every corpse has been found. Most credible estimates place the number of frozen and buried remains in the ice at several hundred. There are no permanent occupants, but murder is not unheard of either. Unverified rumors state that in 1959, a Russian scientist who had lost a chess match killed a co-worker with an axe. According to reports, chess was quickly outlawed after the tragedy. Story 21. It is common knowledge that compasses are made to perpetually point in the direction of the magnetic North Pole. But what happens when you get farther south in Antarctica? Earth's magnetic fields flow considerably more straightly towards the top or bottom because of the planet's spherical form, which causes them to bend around it. This implies that around the South Pole, compasses won't function at all or won't be dependable. Fortunately, this is known to all explorers, and they take additional safety precautions to ensure they don't get lost. Conspiracy theorists contend, however, that the broken compasses are a purposeful ruse to discourage travelers from going to particular regions of the continent. In that situation, what precisely is being concealed? Story 22. Antarctica is not home to ants, despite its name. Antarctica? It's more like Antarctica never had ants. Remarkably, this is among the few locations on Earth where ants have never established a colony. The Arctic and a few isolated islands, notably Greenland, are among the other regions. However, you will discover at least one native or invasive species of these amazing little critters scuttling around everywhere else on Earth. Ants are so commonplace that they are thought to make up between 15 and 25% of all terrestrial animal biomass worldwide. That's a significant number of them going about their daily business, considering their typically small stature. Story 23. It's a free-for-all with meteorites. Plans should be made to travel to Antarctica if you are ever in need of a meteorite supermarket. The continent has gained notoriety for having an abundance of space rocks that are simply begging to be picked up. Not that Antarctica is a magnet for meteorites or anything there is a nearly identical chance that they will fall at any given time, anywhere on Earth. Its notoriety stems from a few distinguishing features that are easy to identify across the continent. The majority is a stark white, with dark-colored meteorites sticking out like sore thumbs. The dry environment of the continent also contributes to their excellent preservation. Any other place a meteorite falls, like a jungle, it would corrode and disintegrate very rapidly. Additionally, some ice drifts have a tendency to gather and deposit them in the same location similar to an enormous organic conveyor belt for deliveries. It is therefore the ideal location to seize a piece of extraterrestrial trash for oneself. Story 24. This chap was the first to ever be born there. The first individual to be born on the continent of Antarctica was born on January 7, 1978. Since then, 10 more people have been born there under the name Emilio Marco Palma. At the Esperanza Research Base, Emilio's father oversaw an Argentine army force as its commander. This facility is situated close to the Antarctic Peninsula's tip. At seven months pregnant, his mother was transported into the base to finish her third trimester in Antarctica. It was part of an Argentinian tactic over a sovereignty issue over that particular portion of the continent, far from being a kind gesture for his father. Story 25. It is bigger than the continental United States. Antarctica is a very large continent. Its surface size is believed to be approximately 14 million square kilometers. When ice accumulates on its coast throughout the winter, it also gets larger. The United States is around 1.5 times larger than the others, with a surface area of over 9 million kilometers squared. That is incredibly intriguing. Humans have never explored a great deal of this open space. It's fascinating to consider what new discoveries we might make in the future. Coincidentally, with a surface size of more than 240,000 kilometers squared, it is about 60 times larger than the United Kingdom. And that's even before discussing some of its hidden gems. Story 26. The Ghost of Shackleton. Shackleton's hut on Ross Island is said to be rife with paranormal activity. Famed explorer Sir Edmund Hillary claims to have seen Shackleton's ghost there. Said Hillary, I remember when I first went to Shackleton's hut, and I'm not a person who really sees things very much. But I went inside the door. When I opened the door, it's a rather sort of bear hut inside. But I distinctly saw Shackleton walking towards me and welcoming me. And then it all sort of flushed away, and he was gone. Considered a historic monument, the hut is incredibly well-preserved. 
and should you visit it, it's easy to imagine a ghost living there. Story 27. Scott's Hut, located at Cape Evans. Scott's Hut is said to be heavily haunted by the souls of perished explorers. In 1911, 25 men overwintered in the hut, and it was here that Sir Robert Scott and his men departed on their ill-fated journey to the South Pole. Some visitors have said that stepping foot in the hut brings a feeling of dread. Others have seen shadowy figures and heard misplaced noises. A cross that was erected nearby in memory of members of the Ross Sea Party, who died not far from the hut, seems to draw wandering spirits, offering an additional spookiness to the place. Story 28. The Arctic Ghost of Fur Trader, Augustus Piers. Fur trader Augustus Richard Piers of the Hudson's Bay Company died on March 15, 1853, while he was employed as a post manager at Fort McPherson in the Northwest Territories in Nuvik region. Piers' superior, Roderick McFarlane, buried him in Fort McPherson, even though Piers had made it painfully clear that he wanted his remains buried somewhere else. This was begging for problems if you've ever heard a ghost story in your life. Nevertheless, it appeared like Piers' ghost was more intent on being helpful than vindictive. Supervisor McFarlane, and a couple of his employees started the dog sled ride to Fort Good Hope from Piers's widow, who had encouraged them to do so. But almost a week before they got there, they heard a voice that sounded like Piers, alerting them to the presence of wolves from beyond the glow of their campfire. A few evenings later, they heard Piers's voice once more, warning them about a wolverine that seemed to be threatening the man's corpse. Eventually, McFarlane and his employees buried Peter's remains in Fort Good Hope before going back to Fort McPherson. However, after just two days of travel, McFarlane awoke to find Piers gazing down at him and another member of his crew. After seeing the ghost, the two men took cover under their covers till it vanished. Had Piers simply arrived to express gratitude for a job well done? We seem to never find out.